So today a lot of people are actually modernizing their applications to a containerized app. And since you're familiar with Windows Server, why not use Windows Server to run your Kubernetes cluster and deploy Windows and Linux containerized apps on that. Welcome back. My name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a program manager at Microsoft. And today we're going to have a look on how you can install a Kubernetes cluster on Windows Server. Kubernetes is one of the platforms where you can run these um, workloads. And there are many, many great solutions out there um, to not just deploy Kubernetes, but also have managed Kubernetes solutions. You can also run them at cloud providers such as Microsoft Azure with our Azure Kubernetes service or short AKS. However, in many cases, you probably also want to run Kubernetes on premises. Here I have a server, for example, a very standalone server. Um, just a single server in this case. So what I'm going to use here is our Azure Kubernetes service and I already installed it in this case. And so if you're going to have a look, um, I can run kubectl to get, for example, the namespaces of that Kubernetes cluster. I can also list all the nodes running in this cluster. And you can see here, even though this is a um, single server, Windows server right now, I can run multiple nodes of that cluster. Of course, I don't get high availability in that case, but if I build out a Windows server cluster, I can also spread out these Kubernetes nodes over uh, multiple nodes as well. So for that, check out the documentation so you can actually look at what scenarios are possible. So here I have my Windows server again. Again, I'm winding back. There's nothing installed right now on this Windows server except for the Hyper-V role. I enabled that before. I created a virtual switch and I also installed Windows Admin Center. And I will put all the links down below in the description as well as to a blog post which goes step by step through the installation process as well. So you get everything in that. But that's basically it. I also made sure I have the latest patches installed. Uh, I have a data um, drive as well. Um, but that's it. It's a standard Windows Server 2022 server. It will also work with Windows Server 2019. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm connecting to Windows Admin Center. Uh, I can see here my server uh, and I can start managing it. Probably a lot of you already know about Windows Admin Center. So you can see here uh, like all the performance data, some live data, what is happening. Um, but what I'm going to be interested in is our Azure Kubernetes service right here. So if I click on this and um, it will load up and it will tell me, hey, there's no Kubernetes or Azure Kubernetes service right now installed. So for that, we're gonna hit the setup button. I get some of the prerequisites uh, to check out. This runs again on Azure Stack HCI or Windows Server uh, in clusters or standalone. And then it does some checks for me if everything is installed. So I provide a administrator account with a password. And so it goes through and checks my system, right? It makes sure like all the prerequisites are actually there um, to make sure that I can install that. And we will go through that in just a little bit. One of the first one is that we need the uh, PowerShell module to deploy this. That's what is used in the background. So I just hit install here and we'll install that uh, for me here. Uh, and again, this takes a couple of seconds uh, to complete. Now, Windows Admin Center needs to be connected to an Azure subscription in this case, right? Um, so you uh, that's one of them. You also see that it checks for hardware requirements, that it's Hyper-V is installed. It will do the um, changes for the firewall and you can also see that I have enough disk space and data drive enabled. To set this up, it also needs CRED SSP. So I'm gonna enable that again, super easy uh, to do. And now I'm gonna do the host configuration. I can provide the name for the management cluster. So this is like the setup to make this work. I, I provide a virtual switch and I do the network setup here as well. So I provide IP addresses for which I'm gonna use, let's just gateway, DNS, and then the node pool, as well as the virtual pool, IP pool, which then is used to assign that to my containers, etc. And since this is an Azure service, which you can run on premises, right? This is running in my local data center. It still needs to be registered to Azure. So I'm gonna hit apply here. And now it creates these config uh, files in the background. Uh, I think the main two parts here really is the prerequisites, the IP configuration you're gonna use, 
and then also the subscription um, to Azure. So like the billing for this managed Kubernetes service um, is actually done through Azure. And that also provides you with support um, from Microsoft Azure as well. And you can see here now, uh, it goes through the different checks and does the cloud registration. And now what I can do is I can build that new uh, management cluster. Now this is just the management cluster, right? So it will set up everything that you can actually can create Kubernetes clusters uh, in just a bit. And this will run, uh, I think approximately like between 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the hardware, the setups and how many uh, physical nodes are involved. After a couple of minutes, um, the, the first setup is actually uh, done. So now I have enabled the Azure Kubernetes service uh, on premises on my Windows server right here. Now I can also go and create a new Kubernetes cluster, right? With all the prerequisites installed and with now the Azure Kubernetes service hybrid deployment option, I can go and out and deploy this. Again, I get some information on what I need, what are the prerequisites. And now I can have the Azure Arc integration. I'm gonna choose that. I can also disable that for now. However, there are a couple of benefits I'm gonna show you such as monitoring uh, and deployment for just a bit. But again, I'm gonna register that to my Azure subscription. Uh, and then I will need to provide uh, the password of the administrator so I can check if I can actually install that um, Kubernetes cluster. So I'm gonna provide that name. Let's call this Kubernetes on Windows server zero one and then i can also go it, uh, and check out the version i want to install so the latest right now while i'm recording this video is 1.24.6 i can then choose the size of the load balancer node i can choose the size of the control plane node i can also um, change the, the, the count of the node uh, control planes depending on how much workloads I have and need to have more nodes there. And now the interesting part, I can create a node pool to run my containerized workloads. So let's provide this with Linux pool um, 01. And you can see here I can choose Linux and Windows node pools. In this case, I choose Linux for that for to actually show you that this works. And then I can go and select the size, for example, for these different nodes and I can say, okay, I wanna have three nodes at the beginning, then I can still scale up and scale down uh, if I need to. Um, I could add more nodes. I can also add Active Directory integration uh, if, I, if I need that on premises. And then I can also do some network configuration. Now in this case, I could provide that, um, that Kubernetes cluster with a different network, for example, a different VLAN or uh, whatever setup I need, but I'm gonna choose the one I just provided before, which basically says, okay, this is your network. This is like the, the pool for the uh, nodes and the pool for the virtual um, uh, IPs. And then I'm gonna hit create, and this will now create my Kubernetes cluster. Again, this will run for a couple of minutes and create my cluster, will roll out uh, the nodes and everything. Now, some interesting facts here. Now, since I chose Linux, it uses our Mariner Linux version, which is built by Microsoft, right? And so you get monthly updated versions of these as well. So we will ship security bug fixes, feature fixes, and so on. You can see here, it downloads, current, downloads these images currently from the background. There's also, if you run that offline, you can also import these images as well. There's also options for that. Uh, and again, I can also run Windows and Linux uh, containers side by side on that Kubernetes cluster if I wanted to. Um, and then it creates me some uh, Windows uh, nodes as well. So this is pretty cool. By the way, if you prefer to use the Azure control plane to deploy and manage your AKS cluster running on premises or at your edge location instead of Windows Admin Center, you can also do that with our preview of AKS hybrid cluster lifecycle management, where you can go to the Azure portal or use the CLI or even infrastructure as code using ARM templates or BICEP um, to actually deploy new Kubernetes clusters and then also enroll into the lifecycle management of that cluster. So let me quickly show you how that would look like. So if you go to the Azure portal and you go to Azure Arc, where you can connect existing class Kubernetes clusters, you can also now go and say, hey, I wanna create an AKS hybrid cluster. So for that, there are some prerequisites you need to deploy on-prem, and then this will allow you to basically go out and select the subscription, show the resource group, or select the resource group, 
give that cluster a name similar as we did and then choose a custom location. Now the custom location is exactly what I meant when you need to deploy some prerequisites for that. And then instead of choosing the node pool size, let's, like what we did in Windows Admin Center, you can directly do that from the Azure portal. Uh, same thing for the node pools, uh, for the access to that, for the network configuration. You can do that all from the Azure portal in the new AKS hybrid uh, cluster lifecycle management. Now again, as I mentioned, this will run for a couple of minutes, but when it's finished, I can actually go out and check that out and now how do I connect and manage that Kubernetes cluster. So after your Kubernetes cluster is installed, um, you can see that here in Windows Admin Center now that we have on the bottom here, we have a Kubernetes cluster, the one I just created, it's healthy state, you can see the version, you can see, you can see that I use a Linux node pool in this case. Um, I could also go and select that and go to settings and for example, one thing I can do there is I can manage upgrades, like if there's a new version of Kubernetes available, I could upgrade that specific cluster and then I can also download the kube config file. Now for those who are not familiar with managing Kubernetes like kubectl is a command line tool to manage your Kubernetes cluster and like that's not basically installed on Windows. Now if you are um, want to uh, leverage that I'm going to quickly show you how you can do that. So there's obviously documentation on this and you can actually go and just run, for example, the following command. Uh, again, this is now on this specific version. If there are new ones, you can go, but it, this would download the kubectl exe file and then you can, can leverage that. However, there's a more elegant way of doing that. So one thing I want to show you here is to install that on a Windows 10 or Windows 11 machine, you can use Winget. And Winget, um, you can search for kubectl. It's basically a package manager for Windows, if you're not familiar with that. And you can see here, there is actually um, kubectl available. So the easiest way here is just to say install, and then um, let's do um, install kubectl or kubectl, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And then after that, it's installed. Now, one thing you need to do here, as it, as it calls out, you actually need to restart the shell. So I'm just going to do an exit here and then I open the terminal back up. So now I'm basically back in the shell in my terminal. And if I do kubectl, you will see here that I have it now available. However, I don't have now any config I'm, I'm actually can connect to. Um, so let me quickly go back and see how we actually get the config file uh, so we can use it with our um, management machine here. So I'm going back to Windows Admin Center and it's super easy. I just select um, the Kubernetes cluster here and I go to download cluster con cube uh, config and this will take a couple of seconds uh, to download that file and in my case it just downloads in the download folder. So let's go and put that at the right place. So for this um, I'm going into um, my home directory. Um, I create a new folder uh, where I'm going to store the cube config file. So I'm going to make a dot cube. Uh, and now I have that folder already there. And that's where I want to store that config file. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do copy item. Oops. And you can see here, I basically just select uh, down the download folder, the config file I just downloaded, which is an XML file. And then I copy it to that destination folder as config. So that's just a file with no extension, just as config. So I'm going to copy that. You can also do that by hand in the Explorer if you want to. Uh, but if you now use kubectl and for example, you do a get notes, you can see here now these are the nodes running on that Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so now you can basically go and start managing that and deploying your application using uh, kubectl um, uh, on that machine. 
So basically, these are by the way the same notes if I scroll down here and I go to Virtual Machines and Windows Admin Center. In the background, it basically installed um, a couple of virtual machines uh, for the Kubernetes cluster. So you can see here, um, there's some management machines for the cluster itself. And then you have, for example, the control plane here um, for, for that one. And then you have the free um, machines from, or free nodes from the node pool uh, itself. So you can see that even in Windows Admin Center, right? It's not a view right now, which is really focused on Kubernetes. Um, it's just like seeing all the virtual machines now running on your Windows server uh, as well. But Kubernetes like AKS um, does all the management for you. Now, if I go back um, to actually look at our Kubernetes cluster, I also get some additional management capabilities using Azure Arc. You might have seen, we talked about it, the Azure Arc integration to manage it from the cloud and from Azure, get some benefits here. So if I hit here, Azure Arc, um, it will take me to the Azure portal. And now you can see here, this looks like an Azure resource, right? It looks like it's part of a subscription, it's connected. Um, it tells me here a little bit on information on um, what is installed. So this one says AKS workload, it says Azure Stack HCI, however it runs on Windows Server, it's just using the same binaries. You can see here the version of it. Um, you can see here that I could use now role-based access control, for example, so I could provide access in the Azure portal to other users as well to do some management. Uh, we have also some Kubernetes resources here you could browse, like this is a web-based view. You could have a look at your namespaces, your workloads, uh, and so on. And then you have a couple of other things I want to talk about in just a bit. But uh, one thing I find pretty interesting is like you can go and then now enable monitoring, for example, for that specific cluster. So I'm going to uh, configure that and onboard that to use monitoring. So I can actually use Azure Monitor to monitor that specific uh, cluster and this uh, takes a while to basically onboard that machine and send the logs from my Kubernetes cluster to our Azure Log Analytics workspace where we then can leverage Azure Monitor uh, and other tools um, to use. Now, after a couple of minutes onboarding that system and you hit the refresh button, you can now see uh, I get some monitoring information about this Kubernetes cluster on Windows Server running on premises directly within the Azure portal, which is pretty cool. So I can see here, for example, node CPU utilization. I can see the memory utilization. I can see here my node count, my active pod count. So you can see here if there are any changes or anything happening on that system. Um, I can also dive in into, for example, having a look at the nodes directly. So you can also see, I can change the metrics and so on. But here I would see the, the different nodes in my uh, cluster here right now. Um, these are the ones I showed you before uh, while showing the management capabilities. So you can see here, a lot of them are currently about uh, management um, or running management services, but you would also see the applications you actually deploy and you can even go and look at all the containers specifically and see, hey, how are these doing? Um, are they up and running? And again, you can see if they're okay or something like that. Um, you obviously can also look at logs specifically um, as well. And if you want to, you obviously also want to do monitoring. You also want to set up alerting, right? So. You can set up your alerts here. You could create a new alert rule directly uh, in Azure Monitor. Uh, you hit create. And now what happens is we provide you with different signals here. So these signals are basically things you can get out of the metrics of um, your Kubernetes cluster or your containers, right? So you can set this up and really custom how, however you want it. You could even go and do a custom log search, which then provides you like if that happens in the logs, you can get an alert or you can do run a run book or anything, which is basically uh, the actions you want to call for, right? It's not just about alerting, you can also uh, on the next tab build, for example, action groups, which allows you to basically go and um, create 
uh, some action groups, I should say, uh, and then basically give you different notification actions, right? So you can have different uh, messages or services or email or you can even automate this even further, uh, for example, to like basically have an integration in, in a automation run book or call a function or build into ITSM or log. Um, uh, logic app or for example just run a webhook right so however the difficult part about monitoring very often is like what do I need to monitor right like this is like knowledge you need to have and if you're just getting started you might don't really know what are the good things you want want to monitor so what we have here currently in preview is recommended alerts right so if you hit the recommend alerts you get a selection of alerts you can actually go and set up so for example one thing i already tried out here before was um if the C node cpu uh, is higher than 80 percent then i can enable this alert rule and then i can select an action group which basically allows me to uh, send an SMS or a text message, an email, or do even run some automation there as well. And you can see here, I can do that for a couple of recommended alerts, right? So like, for example, if a container is restarting a couple of times, you can set this up as well. Uh, there's a ton of things you can actually do. Now, since I don't need that for that specific cluster, I'm not gonna enable alerting here, uh, but this is how you get already one of the benefits basically you get from using Azure Arc integration with your Kubernetes cluster running on premises. I hope this video gave you a quick overview how you can install a supported version of Kubernetes on Windows Server or Windows Server clusters and also provide you with a cloud connection to do some extra things such as monitoring, deployment and security measures on your Kubernetes cluster as well. If you wanna learn more, Check out the links in the description below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.